I'll introduce myself. My name is Dave Evans. Uh, I work for Graphics. We are the providers of Photogize, uh, both lab and kiosk software. I've been with Photogize. Uh, this will be my 19th year with Photogize, with Graphics. Um, so I've been there a while. I am I'm basically the primary developer on the Photogize lab, which we'll be discussing today. Um, what was that? Computers. Um, and let's see. So as I say, I know most of you. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, Megan. Not that I'll necessarily remember from now until the <laughs> end of the class, but at least uh, I'll give it a try. And Debbie. Debbie. So, okay. Uh, everybody else I know. That's what I said. I knew most people here. Uh, this, this morning session is for lab operator training. What that really focuses on is the servant account. And just briefly, the servant account just has um, a limited set of capabilities as opposed to the master account. Um, so we're going to look at things that you can control, um, that you need to control. There are, there's other things I'll show you quickly and say, you know, you can change this, but don't, things like that. But what I want to focus on today, uh, this morning, is what you can control and have to control uh, to run the lab at your location. So what we're going to look at first is the account properties, uh, some of the things you can and cannot do. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, flipping back and forth between the uh, PowerPoint presentation and actually having Photogize Lab up on the uh, screen so that I can um, better uh, show you what, what I'm talking about. Pictures are nice, but actually seeing it live is better. Uh, then we're looking at the printing, the direct printer setup, the product setup, and what you can control. Most of it you can't, but some of it you need to. Uh, order handling, and then we'll have questions and a wrap up uh, at the end. So not that you can't ask questions as we're going, but if you think of any that maybe don't quite apply to the topic, just write them down. We'll cover them in the end. All right, account properties. How to get to account properties. Um, what you can't see under the menu that's dropped down there is um, you have to select the account you want the account properties for. And you can either get it from the menu, you can get it from that A with the hammer, and, uh, and wrench over there. You can also right click on the account, but two out of three is up here. And uh, that will bring up the account properties dialog. Uh, most of this, uh, the servant account cannot control. Uh, it is for the master account. Uh, but this is the orders, and this is one of the things you can control. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Photogize Lab. What I did was I set up a servant account and a master account uh, just so that we can take a look. Um, the, the orders, what you can control is the order harvesting. And just by checking that, that says any job that comes into your system is going to be checked and it's going to be checked every 10 minutes. Uh, you can set that uh, to various settings. Um, Ten minutes is usually reasonable. You can go to hours, you can go to 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, whatever is, uh, you know, if you see you have jobs coming in every 10 minutes, that's probably a good set. If, if it's only coming in like every third time, up it to 30 minutes. Why, you know, why bother? Um, so, that's, that will cause orders to harvest automatically. Any harvest in the way Hunts is set up, even the kiosk comes through uh, this, this order setup. It's not set up on a LAN. So what happens on the kiosk, just to give you some background, is customer says, I want this and, and I order it. It goes up to the web services. The order harvesting will pull it down from the web services to your location. And there is a real reason behind that because that allows your customers at your satellite stores to order things that might not be available at your store. Um, Double-sided cards, for example. Um, and somebody else at another location will harvest those, print those, and send them back to your store. 
So there, there is a real reason for using the, the internet as opposed to the LAN. The automatic print. Um, this is really your choice. Um, if you have auto print, what's going to happen is as soon as the, a harvest, an order is harvested and is in the system, the system will, will go out and check. In this case, I have it set to 10 minutes again. Every 10 minutes, it'll look and say, do I have any new orders? If the answer is yes, it'll start to print those. That's very convenient. It's less hands-on. But it also, um, you lose some control, basically. You can't pick and choose which orders you want to, to harvest. Now, what we have done with the order harvesting is we've added basically a rules box. Um, it's not extensive. Um, the default is obviously harvest all orders. And um, so uh, to print all harvested orders, I'm sorry, misspoke. You can also say only with a valid email address. Now, valid email address is not quite as detailed as you think. You could put in abc at abc.com and that would be valid. It looks like a valid, that's all we can check. We can't check and see if they spelled their name right, for example, in the, on the email. Um, but if it doesn't have a valid email, you know, if they just put in junk, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't print because you wouldn't have access to them. Um, they could limit which, what prints automatically to certain email addresses or the reverse, print everything except these. The uh, way you might use that is if you have a customer that you know every time they submit an order they want you to to check it out, look at it before you print it. You could put their email address in here and that order would just sit in the harvested orders and uh, not print until, it, until you were ready and looked at it and then said, okay, print it. Um, the two that might be of more interest actually are these two at the bottom is don't print orders with more than, and you can set the number, we have a default of 99, um, but if somebody orders a thousand prints and you're on auto print and that starts printing and then they call you up and say, oh, I made a mistake, I only wanted 10. You've just wasted, you know, 9,000 plus prints, ink, paper, the whole thing. So that, that one is actually quite useful, I believe. And the other one is um, don't print an order that has, is more than X dollars. Um, again, it just limits your liability to how much, you know, if, if somebody calls and cancels the order. Um, and you've already printed it and it was worth 500 bucks, you know, you've wasted that $500. So that's, those, those are the two that um, I perceive as more useful. You may differ, but um, generally, honestly, most of our customers don't use the rules. They just print everything and, but there is some, some safety. Or they don't print at all automatically. They, they go in and look at each order before they print. Uh, again, those are, those are choices that you can make at your location uh, as a servant. Um, highly recommend you keep these uh, things checked. Move orders to order archive after successful printing. Uh, what that's talking about is once the order, you look over here, you see orders and order archive. When the order comes in, it sits in the orders until it's printed. Once it's successfully printed, it automatically goes to the archive. Now we're going to talk about archiving a little, a little bit later, but that's also on this tab uh, down here. This is, this is basically my recommendation that's up there, but you have to tailor it to your business, and, and that's why we have features there. Um, so that's the order harvesting, order printing. Um, I'm going to quickly go through a few of these. This is the display name. If you see this over here, corresponds to the name of the account. Uh, as, a, as a servant account, you can change that. Uh, it's something for display. It's something for you to use. It really has no impact on the overall system. Uh, all servants account, servant accounts at, at uh, Hunt's use master harvest rules. Um, 
I believe it's locked so that you cannot turn it off. Uh, again, a good reason for that. You turn that off and start harvesting, you'll get the orders from every store. And um, you don't want to print all those orders uh, wherever you are. So uh, that's locked to, uh, to keep it. Uh, Photogize Web Services. Uh, the only thing on here that you might want to change is the store ID. Uh, the other items uh, deal with your account numbers and uh, passwords. The store ID, once it's set, you probably never want to change it, but you can if, for example, the master harvest rules are changed and they wanted to change the name of your store. That's where you would change it. Um, orders we've been branding. I borrowed the Hunts branding. Um, Servant accounts can't do anything there. Uh, business rules, you cannot change them. You can look at them, but you can't change them. Uh, that's a purview of the master. Uh, CDs, again, you're locked out from that. That's the master. Promotions, again, you can look at them, but those are de um, described from the, the master. Product groups, um, XConnect is for land kiosk you're not using, uh, wholesale order information, uh, you're not using that right now. It would be if you have an outside vendor, outside of the Photogize system, uh, you might set something up here. Uh, Liberty Photo is one, they are no longer in business. Uh, Fuji Film is one that is in business. But again, that would become something from the master account that says we have these so we have to set it up. So that, that's, the, that's the order uh, tab. Any questions before we go on? Okay. Um, I brought up the auto print rules. Um, it's faster just to go through there. Um, email notifications. Again, this is something that each local store wants to set up because it's personalized. That's if you're going to send out emails. You don't have to. Um, you have a choice to set, send out an email when the order is harvested. Um, basically saying to your customer, hey, we got your order, thank you. And you can put in things like how much the order costs and there's different, different features. And we'll look at that, what you can do with the emails. Um, order for shipment is printed. Order for pickup is printed and order for shipment is complete. Yes, I did skip one. Uh, all of those are customer-oriented um, status. And if you, if you want to send an email to your customer, for example, order for pickup is printed OK. That means it's probably ready to pick up. So you might want to send out an email that says, hey, your order number that costs you know, x dollars is ready to be picked up at the store or at you know, the given location. Uh, so you can tell them now it's ready and you don't have to, they don't have to think and say, well, is it? I'll call you up and say, hey, is my order ready? And uh, things like that. It, it postals that. Now, error printing an order. I skipped that and I skipped it per, on purpose. What I recommend with that is, especially if you're doing auto printing, set that up to send an email to yourself. <laughs> So if there's an error on the order, you'll get an email and say, oh, order number, put the order number in the list, uh, failed to print. So now you can go over and look at it and say, okay, what happened? What, what was the problem? Uh, and figure out from there and possibly contact us at graphics depending upon what the issue is. But um, that way, especially, again, especially if you're doing auto printing, um, that means somebody doesn't have to stand at the, uh, the Photogize lab machine and say, oh, this, this order didn't print, what happened? Or go back there an hour and a half later and say, oh, this guy's coming in in 10 minutes and the order didn't print. Um, so I think, I think that's a very um, functional way. And you can set up all five of these, um, these five triggers. Every one of them can be set up, one of them, two of them. It's, it's all up to you. Um, the special fields at the bottom of this, uh, it's nice to have a shadow. Um, 
you can see you can have the customer's name, the customer email. And that's how you can personalize each of these emails. You, you use these special fields to, uh, to set that up. And so you would say, you know, right at the top, customer name, your, your order number, put in the order number, and it, it does include the brackets. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, back to Photogize and show you uh, exactly how that goes. Um, this, is, this is a list, and the, reason, the, the way this list comes up is I right click in the send to. And that's, then you can go down and just pick it. You don't have to type it in. And you can do that in any of the fields. Um, let's go back. Here. Joe, I have, Dave, I have a question. Yep. When there's this error yes. uh, for printing, can, can that actually be sent to the customer? Like, say um, they failed to tell us that they, what type of finish they wanted. Can we send that, can we have an email sent out to them saying, you know, please call the store and let us know what type of finish you want here are the different finishes? Uh, the error printing is basically, I, I don't think it can be used that way. Okay. Um, error printing means that the order, Photogize Lab attempted to print order X okay. and there was a failure. Um, couldn't get it to the printer mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Um, and that and that's really is a good point. Printed okay in lab does not mean that you have the the images in your hand. Printed OK in lab really means lab has successfully sent it from lab to the printer. Now, I, I don't know what everybody has. I know a lot of you have the easy controller. That just means it's gotten to the easy controller in, on the Naritsu. That's what it means. Okay. It doesn't mean that the print out of the easy controller has been completed. There's no, unfortunately, there's no communication between those two. Uh, different pieces of software, so we couldn't couldn't get that detail. But that's so I don't think it can be used that way, unfortunately. So um, just quickly, I'm not going to set anything up, and I'll just use it here. Um, you know, from name from Hunts Photo Melrose or Holyoke or Manchester or Portland or whatever. Uh, your from email address. This should be your local store email or personal email at the store so that they know who it's from. The send to, and this is, uh, if you simply right click, it'll bring up um, this list and you say customer name and there you go. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull the email off of the order and fill it in. Um, subject order and you obviously want to get more detail than I'm going to do here um, again right click uh, order number Oop. be nice if I pick the right right thing you can type it in by the way it's uh, uh, there we go order number and you can do the same thing in the message you use the customer's name Tell them how much it was so that you know they know that in advance. Um, you can also uh, you know put in the date of today, today plus the order total, the pickup location. All all that information is available. Um, you set this up once, and you know it goes until you decide. You know I don't like my message anymore. I want to change it. So can yes. we set up two? different types of emails to be sent out. Um, for instance, one for Melrose, you know, your order is ready to pick up, and then one for a satellite store saying, your order is ready, it should be in, for, it should be in Providence in approximately five to seven days. Or, does that, or is there just one email notification that we need to just put all that information into one message? Uh, there's, there's only, I, I think you said ready, so I'll, I'll say printed OK. Uh, there's no way to differentiate um, the pickup location. Okay. So, so that just needs to be said in the message. Right. Okay. Right. Now, 
for example, actually you might be able to do that, depending upon how your harvest rules are set up. For example, if you have a harvest for the Melrose store, and only Melrose pickup is coming in there, then you would know that. If you have, if, if you're doing harvesting for, I'll say Holyoke, and you have Holyoke orders as a separate account, you would be able to set up an email in that account. You do have that and, you know, and then, yes, you would be able to do that because it would be coming out of a different account. So these emails are not global to Photogize Lab. They are specific to the account that you're, you're harvesting in. So yes, in that sense, you might be able to do it. Okay. And again, that would depend upon how you have the, the harvest rules set up. And I, don't, I know some of it, but I don't know all of it, so I can't promise. <laughs> so, and once you say okay and keep that trigger on, that they will just email as every time it hits that trigger. Uh, based on what you have it set up, and I'm just going to say cancel. So that's the email notifications. I, I think those are probably the two most critical items in the account properties for um, for the stores, for the servant accounts. Um, so back to PowerPoint. Any other questions? Okay. Direct printer setup and editing. Um, we, we implemented this feature, oh, I don't know, a few years ago. Uh, what this allows, previous to this feature being implemented, everybody had to have our, another one of our products called Rasta Plus. And basically it went from Photogize Lab to Rasta Plus to the printer. And uh, we decided some years ago, two years, three years, whatever it was, um, when you've been with a company 19 years, when it actually happens, sort of blurs after a while. Uh, we basically eliminated uh, Raster Plus from the equation. Um, it makes it simpler. It makes it faster. It reduces error possibilities because you basically eliminated a step. Uh, so that's what we've done. So to get to the printer setup, um, you go to the tools menu and then you go select printer setup. That will bring up this dialog box. And what you see in this dialog box is all the standard printers. And that means all of the uh, Windows standard printers are listed in this box. Um, this, this can be used to configure them actually. Uh, using the configure button, but this is not the direct printer that we're talking about yet, but this is the first step. You click on new and you come up with this dialog box. And from there, I'm gonna go back. And I actually already have one um, set up for my own my own purposes, my own testing. Uh, the name, it's any name you feel comfortable with. For example, if you have two um, Naritsus in your store, you might want to say green by the file cabinet, and the other one might be green by the soda machine, or whatever. So you know which machine it is. That's all that name is for, is so you know where that machine is and what it is. Um, I called mine Green 2. Um, that's the Noritsu name. If you only have one, again, it's, it's completely up to you. Uh, the next step is to select the manufacturer. I believe everybody here has the Noritsu, so I have Noritsu. We also have a Fuji uh, set up. Uh, the printer interface is the Easy Controller. Uh, there's two in interfaces there as well. Uh, the newer one and the pretty well one that's standard now is Easy Controller. The channel file. Uh, this is where you have to have some information about how to run the Easy Controller. Easy Controller is 
everything that they use is based on a channel. The channel defines the print size, the, the print paper, whether it has a border, all that. That is on the Easy Controller. So channel one might be your four by sixes, channel two might be your five by sevens, channel three might be four by six matte, as opposed to glossy or, or whatever. You, you can set them all up. Um, but this, this field has to point to the location of the um, channel file. And I can give you that. This is, I don't, I don't have an easy control in my, my office, so I just set one up on a local so I can test getting orders from lab to the uh, order folder. And once it's done that, then I know it gets to the um, easy controller. Ideally, we point to the channel file that is actually on the Noritsu PC. Why is that? The same reason we wanted to eliminate Raster Plus, it eliminates a step. If we can't point to that, then every time you update the channel file, which may or may not be often, you have to copy that file to the location that this is pointing to so that we can read it. If it's, if it's at the location on the, on the easy control of PC, then, it's, then this will automatically get it. And I'll show you what you have to do with that. The order folder is where the order goes when you say in lab print and the destination is the green two. That is, has to be a folder that is shared between the easy controller and uh, Photogize Lab. Where can that be? Anywhere they can both read it and write to it. That's the only criteria for that. Um, so that is, um, again, that's subject to easy control of setup. And probably most of your stores are set up at this point. You're not worried about that. And pretty much once it's set up, it stays set up and you, you go with it. The, there's a button here that says load media. That is beyond critical. Once you're pointing to that channel file, you must click on that. And what that does is it reads that file and determines how many channels you've set up, stores them locally for um, in, in, the, in our direct printer so that we can access it. Um, I guess I'm going to jump right to editing. You're, you're going to see this. When we go to edit, you're going to see the same screen. If you change the channel file in any way that affects the channels, you must, I emphasize must, come back to this, edit the printer that you've changed the easy controller file, and click load media. Because without that, we would have to read that channel file on every order. And that was way too time consuming and way too uh, impacting on the flow. So what we've done is basically if you change the channel file, come back and do the load media. That will reread and update the direct printer and everything will be functioning the way it did. Um, so that is absolutely beyond critical. Um, I have had a number of calls. Well, I had it as a channel, but it doesn't print, doesn't show up. Did you do this? Oh, no, I didn't. Beyond critical. Save yourself a support call. Um, the auto process when printed by lab, what that means is as soon as it gets to the easy controller, the job will, will go in a queue and print as it comes up. If you don't do that, that means it's going to go to the... Um, the editing and, and the color control on the easy controller, and you'll have to manually print every job. That's, that's the benefit of the auto process. Um, the, the printing, and, and you will notice it says default back print for the printer, and uh, there's a reason for that. Um, you can check any of these fields. You can put a custom 
uh, code in here, you know, printed by Hunts Melrose, printed by Hunts Portland, whatever. Um, and you put a, the file name, the date submitted, the email, and all that's great, but I believe the limit is 130 characters on the back of the, of the, uh, the capability of the Naritsu. It has nothing to do with what you can put out there. So you put too much on here, it's just going to truncate it. That, it won't fail, but you won't get what you want. So you have to think about what you're putting out there as a back print. I just randomly checked orders, order number on both. That's ridiculous, obviously. But line one and line two will print differently. And that's the default for every non-double-sided. Double-sided does not do back print for obvious reasons. So um, that would be how to set it up, how to change it, uh, and as I said, the, the critical piece here is that load media. Any questions before I move off this screen? Um, yes, With this editing, this backgrounding dialogue, do you take care of the easy controller side of changing the backgrounding? Because in easy controller, it's a little, a little difficult to understand. There's like the codes and, and things um, to change the backgrounding. So if we were to edit this, would it automatically affect Easy Controller? Would that be a kind of a way around? Yes. This would. this is actually this will actually override okay. anything that you have on the Easy Controller. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because we uh, recently turned off custom back printing on the website because it it was you know it was such a hassle and during the holidays we would get it a lot um, and we didn't really you know find it all that necessary. Right. But actually knowing that now makes it maybe a lot you know a lot easier. Yeah. This this will. Uh, Basically, the, the, the hierarchy is if you don't have anything in the order file, and, and, and that's what lab produces for back print, then it will use what you have back print on the easy controller. If you have something come through on the order file, then the order file will override that. The next level of uh, hierarchy I'll cover when we go to setting up the uh, product sheet and, and look on that because there's, there's also another level of override. But yes, that, this should override what's on the easy controller. But again, just remember, I, and don't, don't hold me to 130 because I haven't looked at the spec recently, but I know that there's a limit, whether it's 100 or 130, so you don't want to get too far out there. Anything else? Any other questions? All right. And by the way, I, kick, I click cancel. If you hit cancel, everything you've ever done is gone. So make sure you hit OK. Uh, I, I actually made no changes, so it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Uh, OK. The, o the only difference in what we just went through, this is, this is a new, um, setting up a new. And, and I basically went through all, everything on here. I just did it with an edited one, so you could all, already see the the entries. And again, the, the difference is for a new, for if, you, if you're creating another direct print, you hit new. If you're editing one, you select it in the list like I did here, and you, collect, you click on configure. That's, that's the difference, the only difference between it. All right, product setup. And make sure I cover the override here. Um, Defining product output destination. You have five, and, and uh, actually there's six. So I'll, 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 I'll mention the six, but you don't have it. Um, you have multiple option, output options. The first one is lab direct. And that's why I wanted to co cover the lab direct setup first. The second is a folder. It'll put the order out in the folder. The, th the third is the standard Windows printer. You can actually print to your local Epson, whatever, uh, through that. Um, the fourth is you can send it out to a PDF file. Uh, many customers use that for double-sided because they didn't have the, the feature on the machine they needed, so they put it out to a PDF and then uh, carry it. So that it creates an actual PDF file. They also use it for uh, books. That's the other. Um, 
and the other is output original file to folder. Now, what is the difference between outputting to folder and outputting to the original file to the folder? Uh, the difference is when you output to a folder, we pre-crop it, we pre-size it, so what goes out there is a 4x6 or a 5x7 or an 8x10. If you do the original file to the folder, it will literally copy the file that was sent by the customer full size, 10 meg file, whatever it is, it goes out to the folder. You won't get that with printing to the folder. So that, that's the difference. We had some people that wanted that, so we added that. The one that's missing from this list is Raster Plus. You don't use it. I didn't put it in here. Um, so that was just tailoring this to Hunts more than anything. Um, the reason I'm on the account properties is I want to show you um, uh, where is no nope, account this output folder in the account properties on the account tab that is the default folder for where orders are going to go so um, I I absolutely recommend you change this. And I do that because nobody wants to go to program files, program data, graphics, or program files, graphics, photogized lab, uh, print jobs. Nobody wants to go all the way, that way down. Um, set up something at the root, um, you know, C colon slash print jobs for, for lab or whatever, you know, something that you'll recognize. And it's one click, you're not going down a, a, a traverse. But we have to have a default, that's it. Um, that's the reason it's there. That's the reason I pointed out. Simply click on this and you can, uh, it'll bring up the, the standard file explorer and you can select the folder that you want and click OK. So that's, wh that's why I went through the, and all of those, that's why I have those arrows. The folder, the PDF file, and the output original file to folder. Um, will all go to that default, unless you change it. So, and I'll show you how to change it. Um, we're talking about the product sheet. There's, again, there's actually three methods of getting there. Um, from the product menu, you can select products and then product sheet. This is my preferred one. Yep, I, I obviously uh, clicked instead of just dragged. Um, that's a quick jump to the product sheet and actually if you right click on products you'll also get a product sheet and you can go there as well. Um, so th that's how you get to the product sheet and this is what the product sheet looks like and we will go there rather than continue looking at pictures, tools, uh, no, products, product sheet. This takes a little bit of time because what it's doing is it's also looking at all the products, all the uh, specialty products, so it's, it's dragging from um, uh, uh, online. But um, these are all the products that you have uh, available as a servant account. If you know what you want to change, for example, let's say you know you're going to work with Luster. You can use that search bar to condense your list. Uh, it'll save you a lot of time. Um, you can also, here is a list of all the product types, uh, books, the borders, the cards, the flat cards. The, again, it, it reduces what you need. All your active product. Active products means your customers can actually uh, order them as opposed to some that are not available online yet for whatever reason. Uh, standard products is your standard list of um, 4x6, 5x7, 8x10, whatever. So those are your products and that's some of the ways you can 
um, maneuver to cut down the list. Um, let's let's start with. Excuse me. Can we yeah. change the price there also? That's where. Yeah. Um, the answer in this class is no. Okay. The servant <laughs> account cannot change it. So the answer in this class is no. You ask me that this afternoon, and I'll say yes. Okay. We'll actually go over this. But um, so whatever product, basically what you can do as a servant account is you can set up the output. That's it. That's what you can do. You can look at the quantity pricing to say, oh, well, how much are we really charging for this? Well, okay, the first 50 at 29, 51 to 100 at 24, <coughs> and 101 to, and I always recommend a lot of nines there. Because you certainly, you know, you could say, well, to 150, and then you'll have somebody buy 151, and it'll just, so just max it out. Nobody's buying 999,000 <laughs> prints. If they do, I hope you have your rules set because you don't want to print them. But anyway, uh, so you can look at what is set up. You can look at finish options. In this case, there's none set up. But you can't change anything. Um, it is not in your purview to do that. Um, these are the, uh, the options for the output. And I really want to con concentrate on the lab direct. Um, I actually had two of them set up. One was large, one was green two. Um, in my case, they're really both exactly the same because I, I'm always setting up dummy accounts. Uh, but you could designate, if you have two printers, okay, I only want to print eight by tens and up on this one, and I only want to print, and that's how you would set it up. Um, but So you would select the device, whether it's, green by the file cabinet or green, you know, you just have to know what you want. Um, uh, green 2 is what I'll use here, and I have uh, 4 by 6, uh, that's a 4 by 4, so this is a 4 by 6 uh, luster. Okay, that's the media. So you select lab direct, you select the device, and then you select the media. Down here, it'll tell you what channel it is, uh, if you know it by channels. Uh, duplex, you would, would click if you're doing a, a double-sided card or whatever. Uh, otherwise, that should be left. Um, custom sizing. It's a neat feature that um, was actually put in for a much larger, if you were printing a lot of 4 by 6s on a, a, a wide sheet of paper, you would use that. Most often you want to leave the default because that's exactly what um, the printer is expecting because it's what you've set up in your channel. You don't want to change that. Excuse me. Another level of indirection is your use, de use default or if you don't you want to use default you can actually set up um, it's not going to do it. No, it's not going to do it. You can actually set up different uh, options in uh, for here. This is what I really wanted. Now you'll see this looks exactly what you had in the direct printer. If you had a need for whatever reason to have something different on the back of an eight by ten or the back of a five by seven and a four by six, you could come in here and set up a different background text. So now the, the, the level of, of the way it prints first is from the product, from right here. That's the first level. If there's nothing here, it goes to the default. If there's nothing in default, it goes to the easy controller. So that's why I say I, I was going to give you one more level of indirection, and that's it. Um, I do know um, we have some customers that have special products for um, special photographers, for example. And they use this to put on the back copyright Dave's photo. So 
it overrides it. But you would have to absolutely have a separate product set up for them and, and the likes. But, but you can use it in that way. Um, you may think of other ways to use it, but that's one way that I know that we have customers that are using it. They have a set of products for, you know, for this photographer and this photographer and that photographer, and they actually use the back print to put the copyright on it. What so. percentage of your photographers to think of the question? Is it 50-50? 70-30? Um, I'd do 70-30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's, and again, once you've done the changes, make sure you hit apply changes. Uh, you'll see it now becomes italicized, so you know you've changed that one. Uh, it tells you the output, it tells you the media, um, and you know, so you can go through. Uh, you can also, I don't, I don't see a, a way to do it here in a, in, a, in a viable manner, but you can also change multiples at the same time. Um, you could... Select, just, just slow. Four different products, for example. Now, again, it's not going to work in the case that I'm working on here, unless you're going to send everything to a folder. Um, but you can change multiple products at the same time. Just something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, you can also change, I guess. Let's try that again. Ah, oh, there it is. Finally, finally kicked in. You can um, put a custom folder. Um, you might want to do that for, um, I'll say large prints maybe, um, your 20 by 40s or whatever. Um, instead of using the default folder, you could set up a custom folder, uh, you know, all jobs for the Epson, you know, 1080 or whatever, whatever Epson you have, and, and put those into a, a separate folder so that, you know, you don't have to go dishing through all the other folder jobs and um, just isolates it. Just set up a, a, a folder just like I recommended on the first one, set it up for a different location use the custom folder by clicking and then, you know, searching, um, you know, find out where it goes and say apply changes and you're good to go uh, to a different folder. Um, and what I did was double click too quickly. Uh, and because I double clicked too quickly, because I'm impatient, I lost the change for my no, I didn't lose it. I got the okay, fortunately. Um, if you make changes, you must click okay on this box as well as apply changes. If you hit cancel and you've been changing 10, 15, 20 products individually, you hit cancel, you lose it all. Now, there is a warning before it does that. It basically says, hey, you made some changes. Are you sure you want to lose them all? Um, so you do have a chance to recover in case you hit the cancel. Um, but uh, just be aware, if you don't hit the OK, it's not going to apply. So anything you've done is, is lost. All right. Uh, there we go. All right, so that's the defining. And I just put up all the... I, sort of cut out the, op, the uh, folder um, sizes. And this is where, I, I, should, I should note, if you're doing to a folder, this is where you do need to set the size because without setting the size, you don't know what size the, the image is, you know, four by six, you know, whatever. <coughs> so you do need to set that because that's, it will be cropped to those, um, to those sizes if you do a folder. And the standard Windows printer, 
pretty much operates the same way as Lab Direct. Um, you select standard, you select the particular printer, you select the media, uh, the tray if it's appropriate, and again, the size will be defaulted automatically. Um, so you can do that. It's, some people do it. It's available. Any other questions before we move on to order handling? Okay. Order handling it is. I want to go over the order harvesting rules. I think it's, it's critical that you understand this. Um, the rules are based on exception processing. What I mean by that is every order on the server associated with the specify account, that's your graphics 383 if I remember right. So when it goes to harvest, it goes out to our server and says, okay, give me all the orders for graphics 383. And every order will be harvested except, and that's the exception processing. If the order is visibly exists in either the orders or order archive folder in lab. There's, there's two folders that, I don't, I don't think I have anything in the, here's the orders, I don't have anything in the order archive right now. Um, but uh, if there were, you could list all the orders. But if that order number that comes down is any one of those, whether it's in orders or order archive, it will not be harvested exception. The order does not match the defined local or master harvest rules. There, there are local rules if you want to set those up. Hunts uses my master harvest rules. So basically you can drop out that local or. Um, but if it doesn't match the harvest rules, for example, if the order is for Melrose and you're harvesting in Portland, it should not harvest because it's the wrong pickup location. And that's the way the harvest rules get set up. Uh, it also may not harvest individual photos. Um, Holyoke has a, a certain set of prints that they can do, a, another set that they can't. So it might be for pickup in Holyoke, but it's for something that doesn't get printed at Holyoke. That won't get harvested. So that's the exceptions. If the order has not been marked as archived, and that archive is actually on our web server. Uh, that order will not come down. It will not harvest. Uh, it's uh, archived means it's already been processed. It's already been printed. It's sat in the order archive and been put off to our web server. The special, no, uh, you know, it, it's it's been in your order archive the specified number of days, and it goes out to our server. We mark it as archived. It disappears from your order archive it will not come down at all. And just as a note, the orders remain on our server for at least 30 days before being removed. Um, the 30 days corresponds to the length of time a, um, a customer's album will be up there by definition. So, so order harvest overrides. You can get an archived order if you know the account number. Uh, the order number, not the account number, the order number. Orders that have been marked as archived and orders that do not match harvest rules can be harvested at any location. Um, there is a, on the orders menu here, there is a harvest named order. If you enter the, uh, the order number in that dialog box and click OK, the system will go out and if the order exists, you typed it right, the real customer gave you the right number, whatever. But if that order exists, it will override archived, it will override harvest rules, it will override any products that you don't print, it can be harvested anywhere. Um, so that is uh, the only way that the exception processing can be overridden. And that is a useful, useful feature, by the way. It's not just uh, up there to say, hey, I can beat the system. Uh, there really is a useful feature for that, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. 
So that, that's the harvesting rules, and that's how we set it up. Um, so if any of those don't, you know, if any of those exceptions are not found, then that order will be harvested. Um, I sort of went over this a little bit at the beginning. Uh, I pointed out the uh, automatic housekeeping. I want you to note item one there. Do not manually delete an order unless you intend to reharvest that order. Because if you delete an order and it, it, it's not archived, so now it's no longer in your, um, in your order box or your order archive, um, that order will reharvest. So if you've already printed it and you have auto print on, it will reprint. So do not manually delete an order unless you intend to reharvest it. Now, the, the deleting of an order is actually two steps. Uh, the first step is delete it locally, and there's a, there's a dialog box that says delete this locally, and all that means is it disappears from your local lab. The second one is the critical one. Now, you may say yes, but most often you're going to say no. It says delete this order from web services. If you're deleting this to reharvest it, you must say no. If you say yes, that order is gone. Not to be recovered, no way to get it, it is gone. So if you say yes, as I say, it is gone. Um, but there, there may be times when you need to delete an order and, uh, and re-harvest it. Um, it shouldn't happen often, but it may. And that is also when you could use the harvest named order. It, it would force it immediately to go back and get that order and bring it down. So that's, that's one of the useful uh, features of that. Otherwise, the next time you get to the auto harvest, it'll bring it down. Uh, moving orders to order archive. Uh, strongly suggest that you have this checked. What this does is as soon as an order prints successfully, uh, in the sense, again, Remember the, the, the division of, of work here. Print successfully means it's gotten from lab to easy controller or lab to the folder uh, if you're printing to a folder. That's successful printing as far as lab goes. It will automatically move it down to the order archive. Um, the nice thing about this is it keeps your orders um, shorter the only, so that you know that anything that's in orders needs to be printed or needs to be Something needs to be done to it. Maybe it failed printing. Maybe it just came in or whatever. But if you automatically move it to the order archive, uh, it keeps your orders folder clean. The, the main reason for order archive is maybe the printer jammed. So you can go to that order and reprint the order if necessary, reprint the individual photo, uh, but it keeps it on the system as long as is defined, and we're going to get to that. The other way to do it is to, if, you, if that's not checked, then you need to move the auto manually. Uh, a simple dra drag and drop. Click on it, drag it, and put it in order archive. Again, keep your order folder minimal uh, so that you know what you have. Work that has to be done should be in orders. Work work that has been completed should be in order archive. That's, uh, that's, that's the why of that, but I strongly me recommend it. Uh, mark archived orders as complete. That just means when it goes into the order archive, it will be marked as complete. So you'll know it's done. Um, update order status on our web services. That, that just keeps the web services updated. Uh, again, strongly recommended. The next, up, uh, the next checkbox, Update Photogize Retailer Central, is really a dinosaur. Uh, it's no longer needed. We do it automatically. Uh, so you don't have to check that box. If you check it, then you need your retail ID and your retailer ID password and your confirm, you know, just confirm it. Yes, Val? Um, once in a while, we'll get orders that are a month old that will recirculate, like reharvest and come through like new orders. And then we get customers calling saying I didn't order anything. Um, is there anything on there that we don't have checked that we should so that it doesn't 
we harvest orders from that were archived a while back and finished? Um, the only if the order has been removed from orders or order archive other than by using the housekeeping, that's the only way I know that that would, that would happen. Um, I really don't know of any other way. Or, I, and I know what you, you're going to know what I mean, if, you, if you've done a, a restore, a backup, mm -hmm. a restore, and gone back and restored the order archive, that might cause a... Um, uh, for the others that don't know what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll point that out just so you know what it is. Um, but Val's, Val's experienced, <laughs> and, and she, she's, she's done this before, that's why I know. Those are the, you know, it really is that exception processing. If it, if it doesn't, if, if one of those exceptions isn't met, then it, it will reharvest, and that's the only way. Um, okay. What we have to do is figure out which one is not being, and why. I, I don't know of any way that orders get deleted other than manually or through housekeeping. And housekeeping, unless there was a failure to mark it as archived, that would be the only other, um, you know, the, the, the transmission from your lab to the, uh, the web services didn't track it as archived. That would be the only other way. I really don't know of any other way. Um, just since I mentioned it, um, there's something in tools. There's backup account information or restore account information. That's what I was referencing with, with Val. Um, as I say, we've, we've done this a few times. The backup account information, you really don't have to worry about. That's done automatically um, every hour or so. Um, but you can do it. It's here so that if you want to do it manually, um, for whatever reason, uh, you, you can do it. The restore um, allows you to go back, I don't know, yeah, I have a couple. Allows you to go back and restore information. You can either just restore the, the product information, which will not, not affect the orders or the order archive, or on occasion, if, for example, the, the most common is we're in the middle of a backup and somebody turns off the PC. That means the files for the day are corrupted. You may have to go back uh, a day and get all your orders and your order archive. And the result of that is any orders that came in between whatever day you select and the day that you're doing this will reharvest. There is no way around that. They will reharvest. Um, the big recommendation there is if you have any triggers, turn them off so your customers don't get these emails that say this order has been harvested. And they call you up and say, yeah, it's been harvested. I've already printed it two days ago. You know? <laughs> so uh, that's, that's the one thing. If you do have to do a restore, uh, turn off your triggers and then turn them back on uh, in the account properties. And we'll just cancel that. Yep. So that affects the product sheets as well. With that problem I told you about the other day, it, where, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, all the uh, places where the products were going, like folders and whatnot, had somehow set back to the default. Right. And in in that case, I I do recommend that you use the restore okay. and check the products. In fact, that's the exact case I put that in there for. Okay. Um, because it will not affect your orders, it will not affect your order archive, it will simply bring the, um, I, I am working, um, I, I don't have an exact reason that, I mean I understand what you're saying and I understand the results and I haven't been able to reproduce it, but I am changing the code to try and eliminate that from happening. Um, I know Val's had the same problem. Um, so I, I am working on something to try and uh, stop that, uh, but it's a difficult thing since I haven't been able to reproduce it. Um, I'm not sure exactly the why, but I could see in the code that there's a possibility, so I'm changing it. Uh, hopefully I'm going to have that out um, in the next couple of weeks. So that's all I can tell you about that. I'm working on it. 
Um, I know it's frustrating. Uh, I know it's annoying. And so I'm trying to, trying to fix that uh, as best I can. <coughs> Big thing about that for me is testing it to make sure I don't break something else. <laughs> yeah. Always a danger when you start changing things. Um, so we, we've covered the do not and to check. Now, the automatic housekeeping. Um, what that does is, on a, on a roughly hourly basis, it checks the date and time of the order and the current date and time. If the current date and time is, in, in this case, 15 days more than the date of the order, the order will be deleted locally and marked as archive on the web services. It happens in the background. Uh, there are times it can't happen simply because if other things are going on, it, will, it, it looks and says, no, no, I can't do it right now. I'll do it the next cycle. Uh, so it's not really every hour. It depends upon what's going on at that particular time. There's two options. The first is delete orders older than um, X. And that X can be anything from 1 to 60 days. And that really depends upon your particular business need. Um, I generally recommend to uh, 15 days. I think most of our customers are somewhere between 15 and 30. It really depends upon your own history. How often do customers come back to you and say, you know, I put this order in and I, I, don't, I don't have the image anymore, and I, and, but I'd really like another print of this, you know. Um, how often do they do that and how soon? If you tell me that it happens, you know, once a month and it's, a, it's always on the, you know, the 20th day, set it for 30. You know, uh, you know, it'll be there. Uh, if you tell me it happens, but it always happens within the first week, I'd say set it to 15 days. You know, it, it really depends upon your own business uh, need in that, in that case. The second option is what we call export and delete. What is older than that, older than. And I can tell you with fairly high level of confidence, I would say 95% level of confidence that nobody is using this. Nobody else does. Nobody, none of the, that doesn't say you shouldn't. I'm just saying it, it's something that's in there, but we don't have people using it. Um, they, don't, they have found it not to be necessary. So why wouldn't I use it? Boy, I could save it forever. Yes, you can save it forever. It takes a lot of space. Uh, just think of how many orders you get, and all of the images and all of the orders have to get saved somewhere. So it takes a lot of disk space. Um, but what, what it will do is it will go through the archive and it does the same thing. It deletes it from the local, but it will also put it out, put a copy of that out on wherever, whatever location you've defined as the export folder. Again, you can define that. Uh, we have a default. Um, I would certainly not recommend that default. Um, but we have to have a default, otherwise it's gonna go crash and burn. So we don't want that to happen. So, you know, pick a folder and then export. Um, I will also tell you that because you at, at Hunts specifically asked about this and were interested in it. I have looked at this feature uh, in much more detail. Um, I will be honest, I don't like it the way it's set up and I am working to make it better. Um, and, I, and I will also tell you that honestly, if, you, if you're gonna use this, and I'm not, I don't care one way or the other, um, don't do it until I give you a new update because I don't think it's functional the way it is. I honestly don't. And that's why I can say with 95% confidence that nobody is using it. Because if they were, I would have had phone calls all over the place. Um, I am going to make it much more functional. Um, but I, if, you, if you make the decision to use it, um, 
Again, that's fine. And each, again, each location will have to save their own export files. This is not, you know, one, one location gets them all. So, you know, if you don't have a lot of, a lot of space available at Holyoke or Portland or Manchester, um, that may be a determining factor as well. Um, there is no cleanup on this as far as removing old orders after, you know, 90 or 120 days. You would have to go in and do that yourself, and, you know, to clean up the space, clean up the photos, you know. So it's, it's a very, uh, very much a manual process after the original get the, get the export files out there. Um, so, so Val, you've been using this perhaps the longest. I mean, what, what is your sense of the need for this feature? Um, I'm not sure, really. If you have, you have another request, so if someone's asking you six months later, can I get a copy of that? Yeah, I mean, once in a while, but we always tell people anyways, you got a couple weeks before we delete everything. Um, anything big that comes through that's like a custom print, we'll keep for a couple months anyways in an archives folder. Oh. Uh -huh. A couple months in an archives folder, just in case they need more of them. Um, I just set that up separately on my computer, so I goes to like a D folder, so it's not using up all my memory. We've just been doing it that way. Um, you know, I haven't had a lot of people ask for something. Six months later, that was just a five by seven or four by six. Not really. Yeah, I again. Not uh, they won't. Yeah, <laughs> it and, and it will it will take a, a while to figure out because it's you know first the customer has to have the order number from six months ago, eight months ago. They probably don't have it from last week. Mm -hmm. uh, in reality, I I'm, I'm just it it. it it works well, and, and it, it can be functional. I'm not trying to say it's a useless feature. I'm just pointing out a lot of space, a lot of manual effort, uh, and again, if the customer doesn't have the order number, and then you have to figure out what day the order was submitted, and then you have to figure out 15 days from that, and you know, search through all these files. It, there's, there's a lot of manual effort even to recover. It, it will be there. I will guarantee you that it will be there, but it's a lot of manual effort. And I'm not sure how much it's worth. So it's strictly your decision, but I, I really do say if, if you're going to use it, and I'm going to change it whether you use it or not, because I, I don't like things that I don't think work well, and I don't think this works well um, from a personal level. Um, so it's going to get fixed, but don't use it until I fix it. Give you a new one, so, um, so that that's that's on my that's on my list. In in fact, it's in process. Um, and, and basically, just just to tell you what it does, it it, it basically recreates the NOD files. Uh, NOD files is where the, all the account and order information is stored. It creates basically an export NOD file, and then you have to go find it. And there's a lot of a lot of work to do it, um, so. All right, um, that's order archive, order, order processing, um, and all. Any questions? You know, we covered a lot of things in, in that. Okay. Uh, you asked about rework. So rework it is. Rework's a, a reasonably new feature within the last couple of years. I think it's one of the nicer features. Um, that we have as far as handling orders. Um, I think it works very well um, and accomplishes quite a bit. Um, rework, again, can be right-click on the, um, the item you want, quote, reworked, and select rework, and there's two, two selections from that. One mm -hmm. is the... Uh, Edit creative product and edit photos and creative product. And I will tell you right now, that's a little bit of a misnomer, and I'll explain that. But uh, edit creative product, um, this is very useful. Um, 
you, you get a, uh, I'll say, a, a, a Christmas card in. And on the Christmas card, the customer has entered some text. And um, they have a bit of dyslexia like I do. And they've written on the bottom, Merry C-R-H instead of C-H-R Christmas. And you look at that and you say, well, they have to resubmit because the text is wrong. With rework, you can fix that text for them automatically. So that's edit creative product. Now I will show it to you, but I want you to understand the difference. Edit photos and creative product is uh, sort of the next level. One of the things that was uh, extremely difficult to accomplish um, with Photogize was to edit an image within a specialty product. And just to use simple, uh, a picture on, a, on a, a Christmas card or a Valentine card or whatever. Uh, and you look at it and you say, oh, that, look at that red eye or whatever. You, they really don't want to send that out. Um, it was difficult to isolate that image and edit it with, a, with a, uh, a Photoshop or something like that. With edit photos and creative product, you can now edit all of the photos, especially if it's a multi-photo um, uh, specialty product, three, four photos. You can edit all of them with a Photoshop or some kind of photo editor and put it back in all of the images edited for the customer before you print. And just to go back to the, to the card uh, example, if the photo is bad and the text is bad, using edit photos and creative product will allow you to do both of those things in one, essentially one step. You only have to tell it wants to rework once and we'll walk you through how to get there. Now I said it's a misnomer. The reason it's a misnomer is you can also edit standard products. If it's a standard product that just won't, the photos, the standard photos, using the rework, you can click on that and do a rework and then put it back into the order um, without having the customer go through it or uh, it's a, it's a makes, makes the process of editing even standard products a little bit simpler. The only difference is it won't go to the to the creative product. So, um, a little bit more detail here. Uh, edit the creative product. It opens Photo Central website, so you do have to have an internet connection at that point, and it goes to the designer page where the the photos are and the text is. By the way, at that point, you can do anything you want to that card. If the customer says, oh, I picked the wrong photo, you can change the photo. You can do literally anything you want to that from that page. Uh, the image can be changed. The text can be edited, uh, correcting the spelling, whatever. Uh, different color, because you looked at it and said, well, that's really not a good background for the color they picked, and you know, change that. Uh, edit photos and creative product. Again, I've gone through that. You can copy the or original image to a folder, and after editing, you can optionally edit the, uh, do, go back basically to the first step and go into the designer page of uh, Photo Central. So this is the designer page. You know, let's just, uh, this is the same image I, I happen to have up there, and I'm just going to right click and say uh, edit creative product uh, just tells you what you have to do uh, you know afterwards to so so here we are this was a a uh, family vacation I took down to uh, North Carolina and I'm a history buff so this is history stuff um, so here's the image and maybe you just want to zoom in a little bit more or whatever um, you can change that you could change the change the picture 
um, literally do whatever you want. So be careful. Uh, inside the card, uh, great visit. Thanks, you know, Evans is. Uh, if I had made a typo up here, I could go in here and just say thanks and update the text and see it's changed. The last step of all of this is to say update. And once you've said update, that's the card. The old card, whatever was there, is no longer in existence. So update. This is going through the same step. Uh, site says the update's complete. Close that down. And now here, this is the dialog box. After completing the reworking of order, it tells you what order you're working on, click OK to reharvest. And I don't know whether I have this set up to auto harvest or not. I don't think I do. Um, yep, I must. Yep, and there it is. Cow pens, you can see. image has been changed. So this is any order online or through the kiosk that comes through if they want something adjusted after they've ordered? I do not believe you can do a kiosk. Uh, I would have to try that. Um, most of the kiosk orders I've been working with in the past were land and I know you can't do that um, but since it didn't go through photo central I would say no because the album's not there you know none of that so um, I can I can double check that Val but uh, I believe the answer is no uh, simply because there's no album there's none it would that has to be resubmitted this is only really for online artists can I ask you a question Deb may do we use this at all Lisa are we, were we aware of this? Yes. Yeah, we use it from time to time. Okay. Um, oh. We haven't recently had access, like all of us, to Retailer Central. Okay. I think Carolyn was the only one who had access to Retailer Central. Um, so, but now that we do, I think it's going to be really useful. Okay. Um, we use the rework folder a lot if, if we need to edit photos, just standard products. Okay. And then it goes into a rework folder where we then access it. Right. Yeah. But I'm curious about, say we're just editing a standard product, how do we, like we've just been like manually submitting orders after that. Is there a way to update just a standard product? Yes. And then reharvest it? Uh, you don't have to reharvest it. That's so. This is this is just a standard product. It's probably yeah, four by six glossy. Um, so obviously you don't have the uh, the option for edit the uh, creative product because there is none. Um, but you can do the rework, and this is step one. And what I've set it up was to use the order ID as the, the folder so I know what order it is and where the images are. And I've also set it up to automatically open the folder so that uh, hopefully it should display. There you go. Now, I, d I don't have a photo editor on here, so um, what I generally use is something ugly like this. And then I make it something ugly like that. And you have to make sure my mouse is not cooperating here. Um, 
save it, save it to the original name, and replace file, yes. not cooperating. Now what you do, you have to go in to rework again. I've lost my mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. And it'll be step two and you say update order. And there you go. So that's, that's all you have to do. It's still a two-step process. Because you're editing the photos, we have to do a little bit more, um, I'll say background uh, stuff. So you have to edit the photos, and then we have to update them. Uh, you could also cancel out of there and decide, no, I really didn't want to change that, and nothing would happen. But um, if, if you do that with a... Um, with a creative product, it actually uploads the photo to the album because it has to bring it back into the specialty product and that's all done online. And that's why it's the next step. Um, so you do want to be somewhat careful editing, you know, especially images, edit photos like that. Um, but it, it can be very, very useful, especially for text. I mean, uh, so often, you know, you're calling up a customer and saying, well, you spelled this wrong. You're going to have to resubmit it, you know, and you can just, you know, put a note with it, and, you know, said, you know, we were really nice guys. We corrected your spelling and, you know, uh, get bonus points with your customer. But uh, I, think, I think it's a very useful feature. I think it's uh, very easy to use. Going back to the creative products. Yes. Those albums are generally up there for seven days. Um, I also would have to no right. I would double. I would have to double check that. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Two notes to myself. Okay, um, I will double check those and I will get back to you on that. I just have a question. Is this a feature that Deb can use when she's doing the books? Say that the, the, the front page isn't lining up to the window hole. Is that something that she can use to move that photo up or? Um, no. I've got to work around for that. It's, it, I, I'm, I'm not sure how the books are, are printed. Um, you can move the photo within the hole on the um, that's that's in the designer page, but if it's because the hole is not in the correct place as a, as it goes to the book, then the answer would be no. Okay. If it's that you know it's just maybe the hole in the book is a little smaller than the hole that's in the template. And you're looking at it and saying they really wanted to move that down. Uh, again, that would depend upon the picture itself, but you could you can adjust it within the template, but not to conform to a different book. And is the book we were looking at earlier, mm -hmm. it, it, the real solution would be to make a cover page template specifically for that book. Mm -hmm. and just you know, you know, oversize it just a little bit so that you know, it's okay. With, So essentially, I, I 
did all of this, and, and I'm really slowing down here so they get on the video. Um, but this is step one in the edit photos and, and uh, uh, creative product. And um, so this is the copy of the image, then it tells you if you copied it, you say okay, and you know, if, if you are the one that's going to be editing it and you're going to do it right away, I'd say just open the uh, Freework Plus, you know, folder. Uh, if you're passing it on to somebody else, then you probably don't want to open the, the folder immediately um, because, you, you know, somebody else is going to do it. You just tell them where it is and, and they'll do it. Uh, it depends upon your, your, your work process, your workflow. Uh, so you say okay, and this is... Um, this is the step two. Uh, I showed it to you using a standard product, so it didn't have this update and edit um, choice because it wasn't creative product. So uh, if it were a creative product, it would say update and edit. The edit is going to bring up the designer page so you can change any text. So you basically do it in one rework, a couple of steps, but one rework. Um, clear folder says, I, I messed up, I want to start again. <laughs> you know, so I want to reload the full, the images uh, or whatever. That's all that's going to do. It, it it gets the images out of your way to do it a second time, or not do it at all if you've decided you didn't need to. So that's creative products. Uh, that's rework for creative and standard products. And we're in questions and wrap up. Any questions? Any further yeah, I questions? I just wanted to ask Deb. Deb, can you? In reference to books, can you edit those pages that people make mistakes on? Is this is this something that she can use? Yes. The rework. Okay. So she can she can. I mean, depending depending upon what you know. I mean, in in if if you have a, a a book that has multiple images on a page and one of them's messed up, you can go to that page and edit the photos. Now they're all going to come down, but you're going to know which one is bad, and then you'll say update. And that will fix the. And that the includes image. editing text also. And that was that's the. I'll go back here. That's the update and edit. Okay. If 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 it's only because the text is bad, just use edit creative product. Okay. If it's because the images are bad, and the text, then use edit photos and creative product. You'll edit the photos first. When you get to step two, you say update and edit. That'll bring you to the designer page, and then you can change the text. So it depends upon the need for each, you know, for each piece. And you can do multiple pages too. I mean, if it's, you know, if there's a couple of pages that are bad, you can select them and say rework, and it'll put all the images out there, do them all, and then edit and update. Once you're in that uh, edit and update, you can go to any page. You can, you can move around. You're not fixed on that one page that comes up. Just I, you, know, you saw me go from the outside, you know, the outside page to the inside page. You can do that with a book. Just page one, three, five, whatever. So you can do both of those. Anything else? So the last thing I'll say is um, remember the um, <coughs> the email email address support at graphics.com. If you have any problems, send an email. That'll get to our help desk. And also, that's our help desk. You can also go to the help desk, submit a request from there. It also has announcements, general information, tips, <coughs> and training videos, which Chris already knows. I have to update the training videos for the... Um, for the cloud cover because for whatever reason the link is broken and I haven't gotten to that yet. But I will get to that. Um, the training class was priority at this point. So, but that's the help desk and... Uh, Just a quick question. So when we submit a request, does it automatically show up on somebody's computer at Photogize and you yes. guys work on it? Yes. Um, we get an email uh, at, our, at our regular email. Uh, but if you <coughs> excuse me, if you send it to support, it will show up on my desk and Pete's desk and 
I think it also shows up on Joe's desk. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it it comes in <coughs> as immediate as email can be. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, we 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 respond to those as quickly as we can. Uh, I personally like to keep it if if I can, and I can't promise this. I'd like to keep it within a half hour maximum that you'll at least get a response back that says I need more information okay. or something to that effect. Um, I will say it doesn't always happen, but generally. So is this the preferred way to get in touch with you? Because I know I have your email directly, but is this, you know, if Deb has a question, she can just go on to Photogize and ask the question? Yes. Does it, we don't necessarily have to email you. Correct. Uh, yeah, we'll this, this is, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Dave could start the conversation, mm -hmm. and then he might have another <coughs> perspective or an insight, and he could actually he could actually talk to Dave about that. All of it's being recorded in the log for that incident, and I can see them both and say, "Oh, and don't forget this," and all of that's being funneled back to him. He's his response to you, you know, is the benefit of the whole team thinking on the best response to the situation. So. We can use that behind the scenes and we can internally talk to each other, say, don't forget this, do that. But, you know, when you're talking to him directly, you know, you do get to him, but you're not getting the benefit of just kind of the rest of the team providing input to you. Okay. So. Yeah, and, and the other, you know, that, that, that's one added benefit. The other is it's all tracked. And we can go back and look and say, oh, yeah, you know, um, and, and Pete can pick it up. If, if need be. Um, so, yeah, so support at graphics.com is, is the, the best way to get, a, get the best answer. Okay. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been, you've learned at least one thing today. <laughs> and uh, make it a little easier to uh, get Apologize Lab to do what you want it to do. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you, Dave. So we have lunch coming. It should be here momentarily. We'll have.